As promised, we are going to take a look at another way of making tongs. Some of you have noticed these tong blanks sitting on the workbench and have commented on them, asked about them. Some of you recognize that these are from Ken's Custom Iron. He makes these blanks. I think they're plasma cut or maybe water jet cut and sells them just like this, either individuals or in sets, depending on what you want to buy. And they're pretty fast and pretty simple to make a good pair of tongs out of. I've done one pair that I'll show you here in just a minute. And I plan to do all of these. And there's two sizes. There are what he refers to as quick tongs, which are the larger set. And they're 3 8 thick. Or rapid tongs, which are a little bit smaller. And they're out of 5 16 thick material. So the rapid tongs would be a little easier to work with initially, but the quick tongs will make heavier duty tongs depending on what your needs are. If you're making small stuff, you don't need big heavy tongs. If you're making big heavy stuff, go with the big heavy tongs. These are very similar to the tongs that we did the other day where I started with flat bar, drew the reins out, created a notch, put a twist in to create the jaws. This is the exact same idea with the slotted jaw tongs and with the flat jaw tongs. And we're going to follow that procedure and I'm going to show you how quick and easy these are to do and offer my opinion on, on the quality and what you're getting for your money. But he also makes other styles of tongs. He makes a bolt style tong which don't actually have the quarter turn in them because of the way they're designed. And this is a really good easy way to get a set of bolt tongs. And he makes what he calls a V-bit tong. And you can make V-bit tongs out of flat jaw tongs, but this is meant just for that purpose, and we'll at some point look at making these. And he does scroll tongs. These are meant just for turning the ends of little scrolls and tweaking and adjusting things. They're not forging tongs. They're, they're a little bit different. These are not too bad a price. They're about $13 or $14 per tong plus shipping. And shipping gets to be a little bit of a problem because they're kind of bulky and they're a little bit heavy. And I've seen some people complain in various forums that they can't really afford the shipping. But as you add more, the shipping comes down. I bought two package deals that they had. One was a set of four quick tongs that was, uh, I think, $43.00. And the other was a set of five of the rapid tongs. So the lighter ones, you get five different pair. You get the same stuff plus these uh, little V-bit tongs. But you get a set of bolt tongs, V-bit tongs, scroll tongs, flat jaw tongs, and the slotted jaw tongs for something like $49. So including shipping, I spent a little over $108, $108 and change, and got nine pairs of tongs that I can assemble relatively quickly. So that's a little over $12 per set of tongs. That's a pretty good deal. So if you buy multiples, you get a much better deal than just buying one. And even if you buy two, you're getting a better deal than just buying one, because the shipping does come down in price. And I suspect that the quick tongs are less to ship because they're shorter and might fit in a flat rate box. But check with Ken's Custom Iron about shipping rates. I think it's worth paying the shipping. Like I say, I got. For less than $12 per set, I'm going to get nine pairs of tongs. And if you're new to blacksmithing and we're thinking about investing $100 in one or two pair of ready-made tongs, investing $100 in nine pair of tongs is a pretty darn good deal in my book. And I think it's worth looking into. So let's make a set of tongs. Included with the tongs was a set of instructions for each style. The instructions are really quite simple and they're fairly intuitive. I would read the instructions, but once you've read them, you'll probably understand how to do it. You won't need them at the anvil, but take them to the shop with you anyways, just in case it's worth referring back to their instructions. So where do we start with this project? The best place to start is by shaping the reins. One, it'll make a little bit more comfortable handle for you to hold on to while you forge the jaws, give you a little bit more length so you're not as close to the hot material and it's a little safer. Once the jaws are done, you want to be as done with the tongs as you possibly can be. 
because this is easy to mess up and if you accidentally screw up the reins while you're doing the the jaw it's very easy to straighten and get right again so I think doing the reins first is definitely the way to go it's the way Ken's Custom Iron recommends it this of course presents that age-old dilemma that you need a pair of tongs to make a pair of tongs now what I want to do is just like we always draw out square and these are a little bit rectangular when you get them so create a square and that also gets rid of most of those marks from the plasma cutter and then go to octagon we're just going to work one section at a time if you want to draw this out thinner and make these taper this is the time to do it and if you don't have tongs to work with you can go back and look at that first video I did on how to make these little tongs okay I got that taper just a little bit more and you can see these slip around a little bit and I gotta re-grab that some that's one of the disadvantages of flat jaw tongs in general this up so hopefully I don't ever have to come back to this end and then we'll heat this section up next and work our way up towards the boss if you're tapering these that first section gets most of the work after that you do less tapering each section until you get right up to the boss and you don't need to taper at all so this really goes pretty quick even with the squirrely tongs to hold this that's really just about all we need to do at this point it's making it match the first pair and I want to knock the edges off up here but I'm going to leave a couple inches flat I just like that look and I think it adds a little strength and you don't have to do quite as much drawing out so is that even close to my first set needs to be straightened but it's about a quarter inch off so by the time I straighten it take care of some of these little lumps and bumps I think it'll be right on just a few places that need a little attention make these the way you want them to look they don't have to look just like mine they can be round and parallel they can taper gracefully they can be flat with the corners knocked off it's just whatever whatever you like okay that's pretty much the same length so I'm happy with that I'll give it a good wire brushing then I'm gonna just let this air cool we've let our two tong halves cool so the reins are cool enough to hold on to just like the ones I showed earlier out of the quarter by one inch flat stock this is just a matter of a quarter turn to get these right so we're gonna do that next we'll heat this up we'll put it in the vise we'll use a twisting wrench to do that quarter turn but the question remains which way do you turn it and we covered this in the other video so if you've watched that you already know the answer to this question but tongs are handed when you hold on to a pair of tongs let me find a good good pair that really shows the 
the reins are on one side or the other on older style tongs, which these are. Some new style V-bit tongs, the reins stack because it's got a little wobble in there and it kind of ends any handedness. But in general, if you're a right-handed smith and you hammer with your right hand, you hold tongs in your left hand. And these tongs are going to want to kind of roll over if they're left-handed tongs, they roll into your hand. If they're the wrong handedness, they, they want to roll away. They roll out of your hand. So you want the tongs for a right-handed smith to be made for the left hand. And that means that the rain that is on the left hand side of the boss is the rain that is on top. Hopefully you can see that. So this left sided rain is on the top and that makes the left side top heavy and makes it want to roll into your hand where it's more natural to grab. So for our tongs that we're making, for that to work, this would be the outside or the left hand rein. You turn this the other way, so that's counterclockwise is which way you want to turn this. If you're a left handed smith and you're holding these in your right hand, turn it clockwise. You want to lock that right at the edge of the boss. And put your twisting wrench right at the edge of the jaw and twist a quarter turn or slightly more than a quarter turn counterclockwise. I go slightly more because I find it wants to untwist a little bit when I shape the jaw. For a simple pair of flat jaw tongs, you do both jaws exactly the same. So twist the second one counterclockwise. By doing it that way, you should end up with two identical halves. When you flip one over, you end up with a matching pair of tongs. They aren't mirror images, they are identical. Now, you could leave them like this and you could go ahead and assemble it, but I think I would rather narrow these jaws out, make them just a little bit longer, and do a few more things to them before I assemble them. I think they can be a nicer pair of tongs that way. And it's worth putting the extra time into it. For one reason, this obvious twist, I think, sort of gets in the way. It doesn't hurt anything. As long as it's all off to the outside, not to the inside, it doesn't hurt anything. But if it's got any raised twist on the inside, it'll affect the, the function of the, the tongs a little bit. So we're going to heat these up. I'm going to narrow the, the jaw out a little bit and taper it just a little bit in both directions. And we're going to work it here to make sure everything is even with the outside of the boss. And we're going to work it here which is the normal progression if you're forging traditionally forged tongs. You work here, here, and here. And that's very lightly with this. All we're doing is cleaning it up, getting everything in line, getting everything straight. So I'm going to start just by tapering the, the width a little bit and tapering the, the length just a little bit. I'm trying to keep this straight in line with the outside of the boss and then I'm going to push this over so it's it's even there and that neatens that up quite a bit. And The only reason I do anything here is just to kind of knock the corners off that are sharp and I don't do that at a real high heat because I don't want to deform anything I'm just cleaning it up so this is just a matter of what do you want this jaw to look like. And just keep working it until you get exactly what you want. And you can make flat jaw tongs or all sorts of different versions of tongs. You can also see this is starting to untwist. So I'll probably go back to the vise and retwist it before I call it good. And 
this ends up a little bit wobbly on the end I'll just grind that off later or file it you could trim it off on a straight hot cut but that's pretty much all I want at this stage like I say I'll put it back in the vise and make sure the jaw is 90 degrees to the the boss now make both sides match as well as you can anything that doesn't match can be cleaned up with a file or a grinder either before you assemble it or after you assemble it but the closer they match from the anvil the less work you'll have to do at the bench and those aren't too bad now flat jaw tongs are much more useful if they will also hold square or round stock and to do that usually a chisel cut down the middle is what we want for this a big cold chisel works about right you want it right down the center ideally in the center line at the edge of the boss but down the center of the the jaw this helps if you got a way to hold this but it can be done this way you're not trying to cut through you're just trying to create a line that you'll be able to find in the next step and all that has to do is just be able to grab the corner of a piece of square bar this is half inch square bar and in the next step I'll stand this up on the diamond and drive that in to create a nice 90 degree notch in there. And it doesn't have to be very deep. It's just enough to kind of want to grab something like this. So all you really need to do is put this square bar in that groove you created with the chisel on the diamond and go slow. Sometimes this will bounce and you might not get it right back in the like that bounced out. I want to make sure I'm back in the groove before I hit it again. That's really about all this takes. I'm going to do it exactly the same way. Start with a chisel cut. Make sure you get your chisel cuts from one jaw in line with the chisel cut for the other jaw. They'll work better that way. This doesn't need to be very deep. It's just a, a little place for the square bar to grab. And it doesn't hurt to come back and do your lengthwise groove again now that you've deformed it a little bit going crossways. That's really all we're after. I've made both of these match as well as I can. There may be a little filing to adjust some parts. But now we're going to go let these cool and drill holes in them so we can put the rivet in. You can punch the rivet hot if you don't have a drill or a drill press. Drilling is a little more precise though. So we've got our two tong halves. They're cool. We want to put a center punch mark dead center of the boss. You can figure out a way to lay this out or you can just do it by eye. Punch very lightly to start with just in case you're off and then you can still move it around a little bit. Drill these with a hand drill just fine. But it's probably a little bit faster and a little bit more accurate to do it under the drill press. The quick tongs take a 5 16 rivet, and the rapid tongs, which are the smaller size that we're using for this demo takes a quarter inch rivet and of course you can hot punch these 
There's absolutely nothing wrong with hot punching. If you're drilling these or have some other way to countersink them, I would just knock the burr off a little bit. That reduces the risk that you might shear your rivet off. It's just a quick touch with the countersink that leaves them smooth. The rivet will go in easier. So you got the quarter inch rivet that came with them and before I set it I just want to make sure it looks like they're going to run smooth. It doesn't hurt to assemble it with a bolt and tighten it up and just try them out. There's obviously some things that are going to have to be fixed. Those reins kind of cross at a funny angle so there's something wonky there we'll fix. And the jaws don't quite line up perfectly and we'll be able to fix that. Luckily our V-notch looks like it does line up very good. And that's the critical part or the V-notch is useless. So we're going to heat these up in the fire. I'm going to put them, the, the rivet head up and the tail end of the rivet that we're going to have to put the new head on down in the fire. This way we'll be able to heat up just the part of the rivet we need to set. It'll be a lot harder than the rest of that and it'll be easier to work with. Now you really only get one chance to get this right so you need to make sure you hold the the tongs down tight to the anvil so that the tong reins are together and then you can set your rivet. If they aren't tight together you end up upsetting part of that rivet in between the jaws of the bosses and it's never going to be right. Now if it's still hot you can start to work this a little bit. That actually went together pretty well and that corrected some of our problem we had up in here. That actually looks pretty good now. So while they're hot, you can work them. If they, they completely seize up at this point, just put them back in the fire and bring it up to heat and work them just a little bit until they start to open up more. And now we're going to have to correct the jaws. There's a few misalignments and things like that. So we want to make sure we keep that groove lined up. If everything else doesn't line up with the groove, we'll have to make adjustments elsewhere. So I'm more worried about the groove. And then we need to set the thickness of these. I'm going to make these hold eighth inch stock, which they don't really very well at this point. So I'm going to have to squeeze those together and I think that is easiest done in the vise so we'll heat the jaws up and we'll just pinch that in the vise and it'll hold this piece of eighth inch stock very nicely then. I can just barely hold that material in the jaws while I bring it over so hopefully I don't drop it. But then when I squeeze it, it's going to want to hold very nicely. Oop. Lost it. I'll pick that up again and do that again. The other thing I want to check is because these tend to want to untwist, does it look straight? And they do not. So this is a really good time to make everything straight and back in line. Sometimes I think getting the jaws just right takes more time than getting the whole thing assembled in the first place. But you want to make sure things are straight this way. Make sure they're straight this way. You need to we can bend things. Now's the time to do it. And that now holds our piece of eighth inch stock very nicely. I don't want to squeeze hard though because we'll end up collapsing the, the jaws or pulling the reins together. So the next thing I want to do though is heat back in here so that we can make any adjustments in the reins up, down, side to side. They still cross over each other just a little further than I would like. Now I've just got to heat right there at the the reins. I can adjust these up and down a little bit until they're what I want. They're offset up here because of the way tongs are assembled but I like them to break, come together so that they're in the same plane by the time they get to the end. If that makes sense I hope it does. So that's pretty good right there. If you want them to be a little tighter grip or wider grip. You can pull them out a little bit at this point. 
Yeah, I like that. And again, we want to make sure our V notch is going to actually work to hold something. And it holds quarter inch square bar very nicely. And it holds it this way very nicely. So that is essentially a finished pair of tongs. The only thing I will still do, because the edges of the jaws don't line up perfectly, I'm going to grind that or file that to clean that up. Even though I think that needed grinding, I still prefer not to make it too obvious on the finished product. I think they just look better. So I bring that up to a dull red and wire brush it. Then it'll blacken and oxidize nicely and the whole pair of tongs will match better. And while that cools, I'm going to put the reins in the fire and just bring them up hot enough to melt some wax and so we'll put some paste wax on here. So we've let these cool till they're just a little bit too hot to touch with your bare hands. They're still okay in the hot mill gloves. And we're going to put a little bit of paste wax on there. This helps lubricate the joint so they run smoother. Just barely too cool enough to hold with the hot mill gloves. But it'll also help prevent rust. I talked about oiling your equipment the other day and a lot of people comment about oiling to prevent rust and I don't always think of that in Colorado because we have a pretty dry climate but in places with a humid climate that's very important so now we'll let that finish cooling completely and it's a finished pair of tongs well here's our completed pair of rapid tongs remember the quick tongs are slightly larger and this is a very nice pair of tongs. They were quite simple to do. The instructions from Ken's Custom Iron were good. We have sized these so they will hold 8th inch flat stock very nicely. That's a very good grip. And then on the, on the diamond it will hold quarter inch square bar very well. As well as quarter inch round bar. They'll also hold quarter inch square and quarter inch round crossways because we put the extra notch in there. And that can be very handy. So all in all, a very successful project. So here's the difference. Here's the ones we just made, the, the rapid tongs. And here's a pair made from the quick tongs. So you can see the size difference. These are a lot heavier, a lot more substantial. But if you're just starting out and you're doing relatively small work, you probably don't need great big heavy tongs right now. And I think the quick tongs, or the, excuse me, the rapid tongs, might be the way to go if you're just making your first few pairs of tongs. Plus they're a little bit cheaper. If you buy the set, you get five sets for under $50, whereas for about $43 or something like that, you get four sets of the quick tongs. If you're doing heavy work, the quick tongs are the way to go. Now, these were quick, they were simple, they're very effective. I think every blacksmith should still know how to do tongs by the traditional quarter turn method over the edge of the anvil. 
I think that's important to know and to know how to forge weld reins. That doesn't mean every pair of tongs you make should be done that way. It's just a skill I think we as blacksmiths should have, and we're going to still cover that. That'll probably be two videos on tong making from now. I'm going to do another pair of drawn out reins. It doesn't require welding to introduce this method of creating the jaw, and then we'll do a second video on how to forge weld that, that rein to the jaw. Of the tongs from Ken's Custom Iron, the, both the quick tongs and the rapid tongs, are that they make a very good pair of tongs. They are intuitive to make. Once you've made a pair, you pretty much understand it. But the instructions are simple and easy to understand and will guide you through it. Plus, they have videos over on their website and on their YouTube channel, and I will link to Ken's Custom Iron's YouTube channel right up here, I hope, so that you can go watch their videos on how they assemble these. And they have videos that talk about the slotted jaw tongs and the V-bit tongs and the bolt tongs, and they make railroad spike tongs and knife maker's tongs. I'm not even sure how many varieties of these they offer. They're really a good product, and I think they're worth the money. They're not very expensive. And for the price of one store-bought pair of tongs, you can get enough of these to make your first five sets of tongs. Now, if you don't have tongs and you need to draw out the reins as the first step, what do you do? Well, if you follow my earlier instructions on making a simple pair of twisted jaw tongs and draw out the reins first, while it's still connected to a longer bar, you can have a pair of tongs, and that's what we did with today. We use this pair of tongs to draw out the reins. It works very well. But if you just want to start with these, what I would do is I would start backwards. I would start with the jaw end, and I would shape the jaw end so that it will hold the, the tongs that you need to draw out the reins. Drill the hole, assemble it with a bolt. Don't put a rivet in it. Put a bolt in it. Leave the reins like this. Use them like that. They're not real comfortable, but you can use that then to draw out the reins on your other pair. Once this pair is finished, take the bolt out. Use this pair to hold on to, to this tong blank. Well, these are size for eighth inch, so that doesn't really hold. And then draw these out and assemble it. And then you've made two pair of tongs, even though you did not have a pair of functioning tongs to start with. You could also grip these in a pair of ice grips. Regular slip joint pliers will slip really badly and you won't be happy with it, but you can get by with vice grips. But I think there's a way to do this by a temporary assembly to get a functioning pair of tongs and then taking it back apart to finish them and refine them so you don't have to have tongs. And if you order that, that first starter bundle, I think you'll be very happy with what you end up with. And we will cover some other styles made with these. I think I'm going to order some more. I'm impressed enough with them that I wouldn't mind having more of them in my shop. And we will get more of the simple flat jaw style, and we will make different styles of jaws, because they, that can be adapted to a lot of different things, including the wolf's jaw style like this. These are made for three-quarter inch square bar. So it's a pretty big set, but we'll make a smaller set that you would find useful as a beginner. And we'll make them out of this size. Like I say, I think this is the size to start with, and then graduate up to the bigger tongs when you need bigger tongs. So they get a, a five-star rating for me, five out of five stars. Not that I've ever had any kind of a rating system on this channel, but we might have to start one. I recommend their product. I'll link to it. I'm very pleased. The service was wonderful. I got these in less than a week from when I ordered them. I don't know if it's always that good, but I was very ha happy with it. So go out and make yourself a set of tongs. Either start with the simple ones that I showed a week or so ago, or order some from Ken's Custom Iron and get those put together and assembled, and then you can work on to making other things. So in the meantime, I hope you can get out to the shop. I hope you like the video. Give it a thumbs up. Love it if you'd hit the subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. Feel free to share the videos with your friends. Leave a comment if you have any questions. I will try to answer your comment. If you feel like supporting the channel financially, there is a link down in the description, and you can leave a donation. But it's just a donation. There is no obligation. The content is free. So stay safe. 
wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.